Hello everybody, Big Scary's back again with another great show. Uh, we're going to talk about the post-fight post, post fight breakdown of uh, UFC Fight Night 171 and UFC on ESPN 8. Uh, there were some, some, pretty, some pretty eventful cards. Um, it was the, the, not quite as good as the, as the UFC 249, but they were still pretty good. There were some pretty good shows, uh, events for, for, for regular television. So it was, it, I mean, it's just any, any sports right now is, is definitely is, is what we need in, in this time of, <laughs> of, of the sky falling, of the world ending. So, uh, let's, let's get to that. So, uh, the first fight of the evening, uh, let's see, this event took place last Wednesday on, on, uh, what was that, May 13th, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, the first fight of the evening was Chase Sherman against Ike Villanueva at heavyweight. Uh, Chase Sherman comes out looking, looking good, trying to take his head off, and, uh, it just pretty much dominated the fight, was able to knock him out in the second round. Uh, yeah, pretty good showing. We'll, we'll see uh, if they they give him a little bit tougher to competition next time. It'll be be interesting to see what he can do. Um, our next fight of the evening, Hunter Azur against Brian Keller. Uh, it was it was a pretty good back and forth there for a little while, but then Keller landed a shot and definitely uh, lights out. It was a, a nice win for Kelleher. Uh, he's a, not his best, not the best win of his career. He uh, he beat Hen and Burrell before, but it's still a nice win. Nice win. Nice to uh, good to see, be good to see where he goes from here. Our next fight of the evening was Gabriel Benitez against Omar Morales. This was a, this was a lightweight. This is the first fight of the card that actually went the distance and it was a it was a nice back and forth affair um morales just was a a little bit better everywhere that where it went i mean it was all it was all a standing affair but so he he just had a little bit more technique um landed the harder shots uh was just a little bit more aggressive so morales took the the decision win um our next fight of the evening was sihara eubanks against sarah morris um, Sihara just completely dominated her from the beginning to the end of the fight. Uh, he, one, one judge even had it, uh, 30-26. So, that's uh, just a complete, complete domination. Um, be interesting to see if, uh, if Sihara can, if she can, uh, what she can do in the division. Uh, she's had, she's been there for a little while and she's never, she's never actually beat any top level competition, but... But we'll see. We'll see where she can go in the bantamweight division. Let's see. Our first fight of the main card was Michael Johnson against Tiago Moises. Uh, Michael Johnson came out looking amazing, just lighting Moises up. And uh, at the end of the first round, Moises' corner was take him to the ground. And so he was able to, to, he rolled for a knee bar and was able to transition to a, a heel hook and, or an ankle lock and, and finish the fight. Um, and I mean, if you're a Michael Johnson fan, you've seen it a, a million, or several times. Um, he just, he, he'll look good, but then he'll, he'll, he'll get caught and, and I think it was, a, it was Nate Diaz, basically the same thing had happened, got caught him with the tap out after he was winning. It's just, you, you just get, there's those types of things. I mean, you don't want to call it choking, but it's like, it, it's, yeah, you just got to, you got to step your game up and be able to, be able to avoid those positions. But it is what it is. He definitely, uh, Moises uh, will be looking to, to fight uh, even better competition next time. But he definitely needs to work on his stand-up because he was getting lit up. Um, our next fight of the evening is Andre Orlovsky against Felipe Lentz. Um, and it was a, a, a workman, a workman uh, fight for, for, for Orlovsky. I mean, he went out there, he performed, he did what he needed to do. Um, nothing too spectacular. He just was better technically than, than Lentz. And so it is what it is. Uh, another win for Andre Orlovsky. Um, our sec, our... What was this? This was the uh, okay. Our next fight of the of the main card was Ricky Simone against Ray Borg. Oh, uh, this is this was a bantamweight. Uh, Ray Borg, who'd who'd fought Demetrius Johnson at at flyweight for the title. Uh, he, 
it was a pretty good back and forth fight. It, it almost could have gone either way, um, but Simone just just was able to pull it out and uh, it looked pretty good. Our next fight of the evening, Alexander Hernandez against Drew Dober, and Hernandez was. I think he's a more uh, more skilled all around, but Dober just completely dominated in the stand up. Hernandez got resorted to having to, to shoot for desperate takedowns and just was getting picked apart. And then he got just finished in the second round. Uh, Dober looked good. Dober looked good. Maybe needs to work on that takedown defense a little bit, but be interesting to see what what he's able to do when uh, against a little better competition. I mean, he definitely, definitely heavy-handed, heavy-handed. Even even his 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 corner had told him after the first round, just 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 scale the power back a little bit, cause so you'll be more assured of landing shots. He was he was missing a lot because he was trying to take him out with every shot, but but still look good, look good. Let's see, our co-main of the evening was Ben Rothwell against Ovin St. Pru. Ovin St. Pru was making his heavyweight debut in the UFC, and uh, kind of like I thought it would go, that that Ovin was, was going to stay on the outside and just use his speed to pick him apart. Ben Rothwell's really, really plotting, kind of like a, a Frankenstein-like figure. Um, but at the same time, if, if he puts his hands on you, he, he can hurt you. And some, I mean, he, he, he tapped out, he topped out, he tapped out Josh Barnett. So, I mean, the man has some ground game. Um, but OSP was picking him apart, even dropped him in the second round. And, but they ended up giving the, the decision to Rothwell. So we'll see, uh, we'll see, uh, what happens from here. It, what, who, who, who they'll give both of them fights next. And then our main event of the evening evening was Anthony Smith against Glover Teixeira. And Anthony came out looking really good at, uh, for the first two rounds. He was, he was looking nice. He was behind his jab, just, just landing nice shots. But nice work rate, nice work rate. And it was interesting, uh, DC had commented that he felt like his corner was giving him too, too many too many instructions and and it was almost like I, and at the time I was thinking eh, it seems seems all right to me but it was like it's like he's he's a, a soothsayer or something because he, he called it within within seconds of, of DC saying that Anthony Smith started slowing down and uh, I think it was the third round where there uh, Glover landed a shot and and you can tell by the reaction of a fighter a lot of times um, if they start acting like they're they're they got an eye poke and it's clearly a, a punch, now, a lot of times that means that they got that they that their orbital is broken. And sure enough, after the fight, it, it, he had a broken orbital, a broken nose. Um, what? Yeah, he was just messed up. That is just really messed up. And uh, a lot of people are saying that that it probably was a bit that they should have stopped the fight before and probably should have his corner should have stopped the fight before the refs probably should have should have stopped the fight before he, Anthony Smith just took a beating I mean lived up to his name of Lionheart and he wouldn't he, he wouldn't he wouldn't quit went out on his shield um but I mean he was literally spitting up teeth and so uh, it was it was just a vicious beating but Glover Glover looked pretty good. Glover looked pretty good, and uh, so we'll see. He's on a four-fight winning streak. We'll see if he's able to to turn this into a, a title shot. Um, all right. So that was uh, UFC Fight Night 171. So on then on Saturday was UFC on ESPN 8, which was another good card in Jacksonville. Our first fight of the evening was Rodrigo Nascimento against Dontel Mays. And eh, they went back and forth a little bit in, in, on the feet, but once uh, once Nascimento was able to get him down the second round, it was he brought him down to his world and was able to tap him out rear naked choke pretty quickly. Um, it was, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what he's able to do with somebody with with who has a, who has a little more technique. Um, our next fight of the evening: Courtney Casey against Mara Ramella Barella. Um, Barella was looking decent in the stand-up, and 
and then uh, she was able to to get Casey down and and uh, was, starts trying to implement ground and pound, but it, it was her 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 knowledge of the ground game seemed very lacking because she kept putting herself in positions that were just that were beginner level. Like you, she was putting herself in in arm bars and triangles, and she'd pull out and then put herself right back in. And that's, that's what happened. Casey got the win by by arm bar. And, I mean, so. I don't know. I can't can't really necessarily say it was. I mean, obviously it's always a good win, but I mean, Barella put herself in that in that armbar. But hey, a win's a win. Our next fight of the evening: Darren Elkins against Nate Landwer. Um, Nate Landwer looked good this fight. He was coming out. He's feeling. He was feeling. He, he had superb confidence. He kept kept shouting to Dana every time he'd. He'd be he'd land some nice shots. He tell just he was it was it was obvious that that he was trying to make a statement. Um, and he busted Darren Elkins up. And I mean, if you've seen Darren Elkins, he has a tendency to get busted up. But dude's a warrior. But he just took a beating. I mean, it looked like a horror movie after the after this fight. I mean, had the crimson mask and all. Um, it was a but it was a nice win for for Nate Landwer. I, I kind of think he could have finished him, but at the same time, Darren Elkins has proven to be a very tough tough competitor, and uh, so it was a, it was a nice win for Nate. Be interesting to see him against a little better competition. Our next fight of the evening was Giga Chikazi and Erwin Rivera. Uh, Chikazi was five six inches taller so he was able to just use his use his reach and uh every time Rivera would try to would try to close the distance he'd get get caught with a teep get caught with a flying knee get get get, get caught with a jab I mean it was it Chikazi was 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 lighting him up um is is it'll be interesting to see um what what he's able to do against against some better guys. Um, he he looked pretty good. He's got some good Muay Thai, but but we'll see. We'll see. Our next fight of the evening: Anthony Hernandez against Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland came out like a madman, and was it 39 seconds in the first round was able to finish him. It was a, it was a, a nice KO. Nice KO. Definitely, definitely would like want to see more of him. Uh, he, he came in, weighed in at 182.5, so he was also talking about probably moving down to welterweight afterwards, so it's ob obvious that he doesn't cut any weight. Um, our next fight of the evening, and the, the final fight of the prelims, was Matt Brown against Miguel Baeza. Um, Matt Brown is, I mean, like his nickname, The Immortal, I mean, that's... He he is he he is immortal. He is he. I mean, it's you have to almost kill him in there. And uh, he was. I mean, he was looking like himself. I mean, even in his advanced age, he was looking like himself. Uh, that strong clinch game, able w good with the elbows and the knees. Um, and it, things were starting to kind of go his way. And out of nowhere, Baeza landed lands a nice shot, and it's lights out. Game over for Matt Brown. It was a a nice win for Baeza. Be be not can't wait to see him fight some so fight some more. Our first fight of the main card was Song Yudong against Marlon Vera. Um, this was a, a back and forth affair. Uh, as a though, I guess it was a unanimous dis decision. But it could have either go, it could have gone either way. Um, I almost I kind of felt that Vera won, but I, I you can't you can't hate the decision. It it really could have gone either way. It was. It was it was definitely they were pretty even on stand. Vera was a little had a little bit better uh, ground game and Sadong uh, had a little bit better stand up. But it was definitely an all around good fight. Good fight. Be be interesting to see both of them fight again. Our next fight of the evening: Eric Anders against Christoph Jodko. Um, Jodko was just a little bit better everywhere. Um, nothing spectacular. Just uh, uh, put in. Put his hard hat on and went to work, and and he he got himself a decision. Um, we'll see if uh, what what either one of the fighters look like in their next fights. Our next fight of the evening was Dan Ige against Edson Barbosa. 
When I first seen this that this fight was happening, I just assumed this fight was going to be a lightweight since Edson Barbosa has always been a, a, a decent sized lightweight. But this was actually a featherweight, and at the weigh-ins, Edson Barbosa looked awful. He, I mean, it looked like a corpse. Um, so I wasn't, I, I was kind of skeptical about how he was going to be able to perform. Um, because sometimes, sometimes when you, if you cut too much weight, you just have diminishing results, and sometimes you even end up losing power as you drop down weight. So it was, I was, I was curious to see what would happen, and I can't say that necessarily Barbosa looked any different. He basically looked the same way he always does, and, and Ige had the proper game plan. I mean, the blueprint is out there of how to beat Barbosa. I mean, you just pressure him and, and, and be able to stay inside kicking range. Because if you allow him to land those kicks, I mean, he stopped several guys in the UFC. So you definitely don't give him that opportunity. Even still, I kind of had Barbosa winning, but I, I can't argue too much with it. I mean, EA did what he had to do in there, so... It is what it is. I mean, I, I, neither Barbosa shouldn't really lose anything in that fight, but uh, I mean, but Ige still, Ige still look good. So we'll see what happens with them next. Our co-main event of the evening was Claudia Gadea against Angela Hill. Um, Gadea was the was the used to be the the second best in the in the strawweight division behind. But behind Joanna, uh when she was champion, um, but Gadea's kind of had back and forth results as of late. Um, but it, so it was it was interesting to see how she was going to handle Angela Hill. We know Angela Hill is a Muay Thai specialist, and she's able to to mix it up nice. And uh, surprisingly, she didn't even she most of her offense was was with punches and everything. Didn't even throw as many kicks as I'd like her to. Um, but it, it, it went back and forth. Uh, Gadea really only had one takedown, but apparently that's what they scored the most because Gadea was able to, to get the win. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see if she's able to turn that into a, another title shot. And our main event of the evening was Alistair Overeem against Walt Harris. Um, Coming into this, uh, and I mean, if you didn't know what had happened, UFC made sure you, you knew the story. Um, Walt Harris had the unfortunate, he, he lost his, his stepdaughter, and uh, so, I mean, he kind of, he was the emotional pick. I mean, I've always been an Overeem fan, but kind of have to pull for someone who's gone through what Walt Harris has gone through and still be able to get in there. So, uh, and he, he came out looking good. That hurt Overeem. I mean, I've seen Overeem stop after. I mean, he the fight looked over. Um, he was even Harris was on top of him uh, with with some ground and pound. But he Overeem gotta say he was tough. He was able to push through, reverse the position, ended up ended up the first round in top position. And uh, and Walt Harris didn't look good coming back to his corner after the first round. Looked already pretty tired. And so then in the second round, Overeem was able to land a head kick and then get on top and and just pound him out. So it was a nice win for Overeem. Gotta say, Walt Harris needs to work on his on his ground game. It was yeah, at this point in the when you're at this level, you shouldn't be. It, it looked like it looked like he was a fish out of water. I mean, turning turning his back to Overeem instead of turning into him. I mean. It, it it was it, it wasn't a good look on the ground. He definitely needs needs to work on his ground game because I mean he's he's got he's got he's got good stand up. So it, it it'll it'll be he definitely needs to work on his ground game if he wants to get to that next level. Um, but so those were those were the two those were the two cards. Um, so we'll see we'll see what the next event the next uh, UFC event is uh, May thirtieth. I think it's going to be at the Apex Center, the that which is the UFC training center or whatever, and uh, so we'll see what goes on with that. I think it's going to be it's supposed to be headlined by Tyrone Woodley, and I think Gilbert Burns, but I'm not even 100% sure that's who the talk was. But we'll see. I, I'm pretty sure Tyrone Woodley is guaranteed, but we'll see what the the next the next fights they put together for. So that was a that was another great show. Um, forgot last time to point out that uh, you can find us on Trauma Television on YouTube, um, on Facebook. You can find 
find it on uh, Big Scary or Trauma Television because this is a Trauma Television production um, or on Twitter which is uh, also Big Scary um, and as Martin Luther King said the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends toward justice